This is lesson 6-2, slope-intercept form. A linear function is a function whose graph is a line. The root word for linear is line, so that kind of makes sense. A parent function is the simplest equation of a function. It means the most simplified form of an equation. We'll talk about how parent functions are related a little bit later in this lesson and in other lessons. The linear parent function, in other words, the simplest form of a linear equation is y equals x or f of x equals x. And just remember f of x is a fancy way of saying x. A linear equation, an equation that makes up a line, a linear function has to have the following three things. In order for something to be a linear equation or a linear function, it has to have the following three things. No variables raised to a power greater than one. In other words, if I have a linear function or a linear equation, y equals 2x plus 6, the y is to the first power, the x is to the first power, so it follows that rule. There are no products of variables. So in other words, an inverse variation is not linear. It can't be linear because you have x, y equals k, and that's a multiplication of variables. You can't have a product or a multiplication of variables. And there are no variables in the denominator. I cannot have y equals 2 over x. That is also not a linear equation. y equals 2x plus 6 is a linear equation. Okay, if I have a variable in the denominator, then it's not a linear equation. The y-intercept is the y-coordinate of the point where a line crosses the y-axis. We're going to use this quite a bit today, so it's probably a good idea that you understand. It's just where does my line cross my y-axis? My up and down axis, at what point does it cross that line? That's what the y-intercept is talking about. Okay, you're going to need a piece of graph paper for the rest of this lesson. Okay. We are going to make a table of values for each and graph the following two equations on the same set of x and y axes. We're going to graph y equals 3x and y equals 3 halves x minus 3 on this same graph that I have over here. And I'm going to make a table of values to do so. And y equals 3x, if you remember, we have an x here, 3x goes in the middle, and y goes here. I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 because those are really, really easy. So it's going to be negative 2 times, ne times positive 3, and every 2 is going to be negative 6. It's going to be 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. It's going to be 3 times 0, which is 0. 3 times 1, which is 3 and 3 times 2, which is 6. If I was to graph this line on this x and y axis, it's a little harder for me to do than you because I can't put a straight edge on my spot here. But I'll do the best I can. Negative 2, negative 6, over left 2, down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's negative 2, negative 6. My next point is negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3. There's negative 3. Then I should go 0, 0. That means it's going to the origin. Positive 1, 3, so that's there. And last but not least, 2, 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I was to draw a straight line through these points, to the best of my ability, I'm going to draw the straightest line possible. That's why I go into the ruler. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit better. That's much better, actually. And if I was to erase a little bit of this, I this here it would be. There we go. Not too bad. There we go, that's better. And of course, I'm going to label it y equals x. My second one here, I'm going to do in blue, just to make it easier for you to see. I have 3 halves x minus 3, so we have x, 3 halves x minus 3, and y. Since it has a fraction, I'm going to use multiples of 2 to get rid, to get rid of the fraction, so I have whole numbers. I'm going to use negative 4, 0, and, uh, negative 4, and negative 2. Negative 4, negative 2, wrong color. 0, 2, and 4. So 3 halves times negative 4. Okay, 2 goes into negative 4, negative 2 times. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. If I multiply negative three, uh, positive 3 halves times negative 2 over 1, Negative, this 2 can cancel with that 2. I'm going to end up with negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. 
negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. If I multiply 3 halves times 0, I'm going to get 0 minus 3 is negative 3. This down just a little bit. If I multiply 3 halves times 2, I'm going to get uh, 2. Or 2 and 3, excuse me. 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. And if I multiply 3 halves times 4, I'm going to get 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. So if I plot those points, I'm going to bring my graph down a bit. If I plot negative 4, negative 9, I'm not even sure if I can get all these on here. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's negative 9. If I plot negative 2, negative 6, that would be here. If I plot 0, negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, it goes there. Uh, 2, 0, it goes there. And 3, 3, goes there. It's a nice little straight line. Whoops, 3, 3. It would be, it would be 4, 3. That would be helpful. You want the right point, and it works better. Ooh, that didn't work. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, there we go. Now it's in a straight line. If I was to draw this straight line, like this, we get y equals three halves x plus three. We're going to look at these two graphs and look at try to see if there's a relationship between these graphs and the information that we're seeing. Okay? If you look at the purple graph, y equals three x. Where does my purple graph cross the y-axis? Well, it crosses the y-axis right here at the origin. Okay. Last lesson, we learned about slope. So let's take a look and see if we can find the slope between any two points. I'm just going to use the first two points that I had, which was this point here. So I'm going to go up, and I'm going to go over. I'm going to go up 3, and to the right 2. Oops, that's for the blue one. Silly name. Let's try the purple line. I'm just looking on the purple line. All right, so let's go back to my purple line here. If I go up to my purple line here, I'm going to use this point here and this point here. So I'm going to go up 3 and over 1. Up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. I missed my line a little bit. But you'll notice that the rise is 3, the run is 1. So the slope is 3 over 1. So in this particular equation here, the slope is 3 over 1, and my y-intercept is 0. That's the y coordinate of the point where it crosses the y axis. Okay, let's take a look at the blue graph for a second. If I look at my blue graph, I'm going to do anything with the blue graph in, in uh, red so you can see it. It crosses the y in, in axis right here, this point right there, which happens to be negative 3. If we wanted to look at the slope of this line, again, it's still positive. But if I start with this point right here, I'm going up 3 to the right 2, up 3 to the right 2. If I started here, it would be up 3 to the right 2. So I'm constantly going over to up 3 and right 2. So my slope here is 3 over 2, and my y-intercept is negative 3. If you look really closely, you should see that there is a relationship here. The number that comes in front of x It's the same as my slope right here. In both cases, the number that comes in front of x is the same as my slope right here. The number that is added or subtracted to x, in this case, 0, x, y equals 3x plus nothing, and what's my y-intercept? 0. Here, I've got negative 3, and what's my y-intercept? Negative 3, which means the graph the equation of a line gives us very much a lot of important information about its graph. Okay. We can look at this and we can clearly see that there is a huge relationship here. If I'm given the equation, whoa, if I'm given the equation of a line, I should be able to determine its slope and its y-intercept if it's written in the right form. Okay. So if you know the slope of a line and its y-intercept, you can write the equation of a line because the slope-intercept form of an equation is given as y equals mx plus b. 
where M is the slope and B is the y-intercept. Right? So now we know that if an equation is written in y equals form, we solve it for y, that's called y equals form, it's also called slope-intercept form because it's written in y equals m times x plus b. Now it makes sense all the times before why I was telling you that you should put the value with the x before you put the value that didn't have an x. Because I knew we were going to get to this lesson here, and I want you to write it in the right form. So once you know that, you can find the slope and the y-intercept of any equation as long as you know the equation. Let's take a look at these examples. I need to find the slope and y-intercept for the following. y equals negative 2x plus 6. Okay, my slope is the number that comes in front of x. So in this case, it's negative 2. Or you could write it as negative 2 over 1. It does not matter. My y-intercept, and remember the abbreviation for y-intercept is b. My y-intercept is the number that comes after the x. So in this case, it is 6. So my y-intercept is 6. If an equation is written in slope-intercept form, it is very, very, very easy to find the slope and the y-intercept. In problem number two, our slope is one-half. It is not one-half x, it is one-half. It is the constant term that comes in front of the variable term of x. My y-intercept is negative four. Now, if an equation is not written in y equals form, you have to write it in y equals form. If you look at problem number three, it's close. We have 5y equals 4. We don't want 5y. We want y. So we're going to have to solve this for y by taking this entire equation and dividing every part of it by 5. So now we have y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 7 fifths. Now it is written in slope-intercept form, and we know that our slope is negative 3 fifths, and our y-intercept is 7 fifths. Or you could rewrite that instead of 7 fifths. You can write the y-intercept as a mixed number, which would be 1 and 2 fifths. Does not matter. Slope cannot be written as a mixed number. Y-intercept can be written as a mixed number. If you look at problem number 4, it is really not in y equals form. To get it into y equals form, we have to get everything with a y on one side of the equation and anything that doesn't have a y on the other side of the equation. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides of the equation. Remember, they're not like terms, so don't wind them up. They're not like terms in the end, but this 5x cancels. I end up with negative 4y equals, I prefer it as negative 5x plus 8 rather than 8 minus 5x because you need to write it in y equals mx plus b. To solve this for y, and I don't want a negative y, I want a positive y, I'm going to divide by negative 4. Divide each part by negative 4, you're much less likely to make a mistake. These cancel out, giving me positive y. This negative cancels with this negative, giving me 5 fourths x. And 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Now it is written in slope-intercept form. So I now can tell you that my slope is 5 fourths, and my y-intercept is negative 2. It's kind of cool. Once you know slope-intercept form, you can find the slope and the y-intercept. Okay. What's really nice is it's so much easier to graph using slope-intercept method because you no longer need to make a table of values. It's really quite slick. You can use the slope-intercept form of equation to write an equation given the slope and y-intercept as well. Okay, let's just look at this. I have, if I'm given the slope and I'm given the y-intercept, I can write the equation. Just like back here, if I had the equation, I could find the slope of the y-intercept. Here, if I have the slope of the y-intercept, I can write the equation. So if my slope is 3 fifths and my y-intercept is negative 2, my equation, written in y equals mx plus b form, y equals, substitute this in for m, 3 fifths x plus, and substitute this in for b. So minus plus a negative 2, which that is kind of funny looking, so y equals 3 fifths x minus 2. Simply enough. This next problem, same thing, substituted y equals mx plus b form. y equals mx plus b. So y will equal negative 4x plus 6. Simple as that. Like I said before, the nicest thing about slope-intercept form is as long as your intercept 
is a whole number or a half, like two and a half, four and a half, six and a half, it is really, really, really easy to graph using what we call slope intercept method of graphing. You no longer have to make a table of values. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead of this and go back to the other thing. So if I want to graph using the slope intercept method, all I need to do is first make sure my equations are written in slope intercept form. If they're not, I have to rewrite them in slope intercept form. I need to determine what the y-intercept is and plot that first. Then determine what my slope is and then use my y-intercept. So let's look at a couple of examples here. We're going to graph y equals 3x minus 4 without having to make a table of values. Okay, here's my lovely x and y axis. I'm going to label my x and y axis here. Because you should always do that because if you end up with a horizontal or a vertical line, we need to know which one is the axis and which one is the line. So in the equation of y equals 3x minus 4, my slope here is 3 and my y-intercept is negative 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my y-intercept right here. Okay, I'm going to plot my y-intercept. So on my graph, I'm going to go to 0, 0. My y-intercept says it crosses the y-axis at negative 4. This is my y-axis. I'm going to cross 1, 2, 3. Here's where it crosses my y-axis. Okay, so it crosses my y-axis at negative 4. From the y-intercept, I am now going to apply the slope. In this particular case, the slope is 3 or 3 over 1. Slope is rise over run if it's positive, fall over run if it's negative. So if it's positive, you're going to go up and to the right. If it's negative, you're going to go down and to the right. Positive slope, up and right. Negative slope, down and right. So, if my slope is 3 over 1, I'm going to go from my y-intercept. I'm going to count 3 points up and 1 point to the right. There's the next point of my graph. From there, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, to the right 1. And there's my third point. Once you have 3 points, that's good enough for me because 3 points make a straight line. And make sure that your 2 points make a straight line. But the third point makes sure you're accurate. And you can draw your line using a straight edge. Please use a straight edge. I cannot because I can't put it on the board. And the last thing you should do is graph the equation y equals 3x minus 4. It's very, very, very handy to be able to write to graph using slope intercept method. Let's look at problem number two. We have y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 2. In this particular problem, my slope is negative 3 fifths and my y intercept is 2. So I will go up my y-axis and put a point at 2 because that's where it crosses the y-axis. My slope is negative 3 fifths, so it goes down 3 and to the right 5. So I'm going to go down from my y-intercept and kind of count down 3 units into the right 5 units. And there's my next point. Down 3 units to the right 5 units. And there's my next point. Now I can draw my line using a straight edge. Hey, that's a pretty straight line. Always put your arrow heads on it and label it. Y equals negative 3 this x plus 2. Graphing using slope intercept method, provided your y intercept is a whole number, is probably the easiest form of graphing that there is. It's very slick, it's very fast, and it's very efficient. Now, you can also write an equation from a graph. If I'm given a graph, I should be able to write the equation of this graph by just reading the graph. All I need to do is find two points on the graph so that I can determine the slope, look at my y-intercept, find my slope, find my y-intercept, put it in slope-intercept form. So here's this lovely graph right here. I can see I have a point right here, and I have a point right here. Okay, This point happens to be a negative 2, positive 3. And this point happens to be a 0, 2. Okay. From my graph, I can use that graph to find my slope. I know my graph is going down and to the right, so my slope should be negative. So from this point, from the negative 2, 3 to 0, 2, I'm going down 1 and to the right 2. So I automatically know right now my slope is negative 1 over 2. Down 1, right 2. My, it crosses the y-intercept at 
2. 0, 2. So the class is a y intercept. The y value of where it crosses the line intercept is 2. So now that I know what my slope and my y intercept is, I can simply write my equation in y equals mx plus b form. y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. And there you go. Slope intercept method of graphing is probably the easiest and most efficient way to graph. 